Greetings from the homestead. I'm Volkmom, and tonight, with the moon hanging bright in the sky, I'm here to share some insight into an ancient ally of our folk, Pine. This Hyperborean companion first came into being about 300 million years ago, but most of them are extinct now. The Pine family as we know it today originated about 100 million years ago. From Botany in a Day by Thomas Elpel, a wonderful book I highly recommend, we read. Members of the pine family are naked seed plants, even though the seeds are highly protected under the scales of developing cones. The female cones briefly become elongated, exposing the ovules to the pollen in the wind. The shape of the cones causes air currents to swirl around them to help catch this pollen. The pollen and the cones are aerodynamically matched to each other, so each species captures its own pollen. After pollination, the scales grow rapidly and again cover the ovules, allowing them to mature into seeds. Nature's perfect design in ways such as this never ceases to amaze me. I have always been naturally attracted to pines. The Panaceae family, including Suga, Abies, Larix, and Picea, or Hemlock, Fir, Larch, and Spruce, all conifers really. Although their range is not restricted to the cold northern regions of the world, they were most certainly a prominent aspect of our ancestors' lives. The trees and their needles and their cones have a cyclical spiral shape and energy. In the cold, dark days of winter, they're the only sign of life. Feeling and hearing the wind roaring or whispering through the pines, smelling their sweet and sour resin on a warm sunny day, this can trigger and facilitate ancestral memory. Spending time in a pine grove is very healthful and meditative. It is almost as though you and the pines know something together, something unspoken, something that can't be put to modern language. The pine grove is also a very nice place to take your sweetheart for a date. Children too, playing hide and seek in between the whirling branching trunks and resting on a thick soft bed of golden amber needles. It is good for us Europeans to adorn ourselves with bits of Baltic amber jewelry too, a daily reminder of our connection to the motherland. Amber is the fossilized resin of ancient pines. In winter at Yule, we follow the traditions of our ancestors, of hanging offerings, bright red in color, on the deep, life-affirming green pine branches above the perfect white snow. Yet pine is also very active in the warm summer months as well. In spring, new bright growth pushes forth, and pollen ripens in summer. Pine pollen is an androgen, such as testosterone, which promotes the development and maintenance of masculine characteristics. You won't find the pollen in the cones, as noted previously. You'll know it's ripe, though, when you tap the golden yellow new growth and see plumes of yellow powder. Gather by tapping the pollen into a paper bag or a plastic bag, or by gently trimming the pollen-laden tips and infusing or preserving them in honey. The tips are also edible and quite delicious. The pine pollen powder is very fine. It has a pleasant, mild flavor. You can sprinkle it on your food, or if you gather enough, you can make your own gel capsule supplements. Store the pollen in an airtight glass container in the freezer if you're not using it right away. My husband first taught me about pine needle tea many years ago. We picked bunches of needles and made a tea, which is high in vitamin C, while backpacking in remote wilderness. The tea is mild and pleasantly sour, and can be sweetened to taste. We boiled some fresh spring water and threw a few handfuls of needles in and let it steep for 10 to 20 minutes. Pine pollen is a superfood and could even save your life in a survival scenario. 
It has many bioactive nutrients, minerals, and vitamins. The inner bark of pines can be eaten raw or cooked to help you survive starvation. All species of pine have edible pine nuts, but some are more easily harvested than others. Pine sap or resin can be used to heal wounds or sores, keeping germs out with its antimicrobial and antifungal properties. My husband also makes what is called fat lighter, which is he chops some wood from a round of a pine log down to its resin-soaked heartwood and using a hatchet carves down several small pieces about four inches long and half inch in diameter. These are excellent fire starters and are naturally water repellent. The pine cones are also good fire starter. The evergreen boughs are a good water wicking and insulative addition to survival shelters. It is worth mentioning that there is one type of pine that may be toxic and should not be eaten, and that's the ponderosa pine, which grows in Western California and Canada. I hope that you will find a way to connect with pine in your life. Take your lady to rest in its sweet shade. Teach your children how to survive with the gifts that it offers. Hail our people, hail victory. Thank you.